The Osborne Family Spectacle of Lights. The best Christmas experience Walt Disney World has ever offered. Or is it? Yes, yes it is. I know, I know, I covered this last year in the Extinct Disney World Christmas Experiences video, but I feel like they qualify for their own. Jennings Osborne, along with his wife Mitzi, founded the Arkansas Research Medical Testing Center in Little Rock, Arkansas in 1968. William Jennings Osborne, a microbiologist, then purchased a large estate in the middle of town in 1976. In 1980, they had their only daughter, Alison Brianne, who went by the nickname Breezy. In 1986, Jennings' daughter Breezy asked his father if they could decorate their home in lights. Jennings was often at work and his daughter wanted to spend time hanging the lights on their house together. Putting together 1,000 lights for the holiday season, the lights added to the house turned into a beloved holiday tradition. Each and every year, he added to the display, making it bigger and bigger. Osborne would even stand outside his house, handing out huge candy canes to visitors who came to see his display. I love to go into a small town and create memories and make people just talk about it for weeks. Eventually, it became so big he purchased the two properties next to his own and expanded the lights even further. By 1993, the display had grown to over 3 million lights, including the illuminated globe, rotating carousels at the end of the driveway, and a 70-foot tall Christmas tree with 80,000 lights alone. His driveway was even covered by a canopy of 30,000 red lights. The Osborne's home had become a tourist attraction by itself during the holiday season. At this point, the display was lit for 35 days over the Christmas season from sunset to midnight every single day. Since the Osborne's house was located on one of the busiest streets in Little Rock, it caused severe traffic issues and continued complaints. The neighbours even said that for one month a year they were prisoners in their own home due to the amount of people gathered outside. Six of the Osborne's neighbours filed a lawsuit saying the traffic congestion made trips to the store take as long as two hours, and also that they feared emergency vehicles could not get down the street. Osborne's response to this, he added 3 million more lights and hired four off-duty policemen to assist neighbours in entering and leaving their home. I received enough letters saying that I have no class, I'm the king of white trash, I have no problem with that, you know, how many presidential dinners have they had privately? The display was so large he also hired a full-time engineer to look after the lights. Arkansas Power and Light said that in the single month of December, the Osborne's decorations consumed as much electricity as the average Little Rock home did in an entire year. When he lit the display in 1991 with the addition of some new lights, he blew out the transformer and blacked out the entire neighborhood. After that, each year he was assigned a transformer just to himself. The lights were so bright it was reported that aircrafts could see the house from over 80 miles away. Eventually, the county court ordered an injunction against the display, limiting it to 15 days and only be able to be lit from 7pm until 10.30pm. Osborne ignored this ruling though and was fined $10,000. He appealed to the Arkansas court and lost, and once again in 1994 to the Supreme Court where Justice Clarence Thomas refused to halt the order. The following year in 1995, the Supreme Court shut down the display altogether. When asked about his display in 1994, Osborne told the New York Times he did it to make people happy and it made him so sad that a few people could ruin something that so many enjoyed. The court case brought national attention to the display and multiple cities offered to host the lights. Bruce Laval, the then executive vice president of Walt Disney World, had mentioned the news story he had seen at a staff meeting. Walt Disney World project director John Fallon contacted Osborne's attorney about the moving of the display to the Orlando Resort. Osborne was initially intrigued by the offer. He was a huge fan of Walt Disney World, but he misunderstood where they wanted to house the lights on Residential Street, a backlot section of the then MGM Backlot Studios tour, believing they wanted to set them up on a random street. But when he learned they were going to be inside of one of the parks, Osborne was not only happy that his lights would survive, but millions of people would get to enjoy them. John flew up to Little Rock to find out the lights were stored in huge storage sheds in the backyards of the houses Jennings owned. John and the Osbournes became great friends over the years, and even had Disney name tags made up for them when they visited their display in Orlando. 
Disney didn't pay for the use of the lights, but Disney would put up the Osborne family at the Grand Floridian for around a week each December for them to come and see the display, and a special ceremony would feature them turning on the lights. The same year that the court ordered the lights to be shut down, they would find a new home at Walt Disney World as the Osborne family spectacle of lights and were an instant success. Osborne said he just liked making memories and wanting people to feel like they were inside the lights looking out at the world. When the four large trucks arrived at Walt Disney World with the lights on November 4th, 1995, the lights were unloaded. Inside, they found a light-up cat, which they were confused where it would fit in. When contacting Jennings, he told them that it was actually a mistake, and it was part of the Osborne Halloween decorations. That cat remained lit, hidden in the lights at Walt Disney World every year since. Three different teams worked around the clock for multiple weeks to set up the lights, and four of the Osborne's own team came down to help in the early years. The lights came on for the first time at Walt Disney World on November 24th, 1995. Residential Street was part of the then Backlot Tour, and trams would constantly pass through the area during the day. When the lights were in place though, the tram tours would stop before sunset and actually allow guests to walk along Residential Street to see the display. The first year featured a short show called Lights Camera Christmas, where a movie director and his crew were filming a holiday scene. Two men from the power company turn up and threaten to turn off the power since the permits had not arrived. A young child from the audience was chosen to come up on stage and with the encouragement of the crowd was able to flip the switch and turn on the lights. This first year in 1995 was just the lights from the Osborne house, which had been transported to Orlando. Over the following years though, the display would increase even further to over 5 million lights. The display itself was made up of over 10 miles of rope lighting, connected by another 30 miles of extension cords tied together with 2 million ties. The install of the lights took around 20,000 man hours in preparation for the holiday season. In 2004, the park began construction on a new area for the upcoming clone of Lights Motors Action Extreme Stunt Show from Disneyland Paris, set to open in 2005. Part of the construction for this new show included the demolition of Residential Street and required the lights to be moved, but at least they continued. They were moved to the New York street set known as the Streets of America, which had originally been part of the Backlot Tour attraction, but opened up to guests to walk along shortly after that opened. To increase the spectacular even more, Disney added over 30 snow machines using 100 gallons of fluid per evening to add a snow effect to the display. The following year in 2005, Sylvania became the sponsor of the lights as part of the parent company Siemens long-term sponsorship deal with the resort. The lights would continue to improve and be updated throughout the years, with 2006 adding over 1,500 dimmer relay circuits and control switches to the display to enable them to dim on and off electronically. <laughs> The relays were choreographed to a musical score and the display was now known as the Osborne Family Spectacular of Dancing Lights. The show was a sight to behold, with over 5 million lights dancing around you to different festive songs such as Felice Navidad and A Mad Russian's Christmas. The nativity scene had proven controversial to some and was moved to the Italian pavilion in Epcot for the holidays. One year, glasses were given out where you could see angels in the lights. Again, due to complaints, it was changed the following year to see snowflakes due to the religious aspect. Up there, 2011 once again saw its biggest update yet, with all of the lights being swapped out for LED lights including all the rope lights. This overall updated them to a state-of-the-art lighting system. All of the previous dancing sequences though had to be reprogrammed and the canopy, which will remain all red since it moved to MGM Studios, would now be able to change colour capable of 16 million different colours. The lights were also now energy efficient and environmentally friendly. Those of you out on the streets of America are in the midst of one of the most beautiful Christmas lights displays ever created. And it all came from one family. The Osborne family of Little Rock, Arkansas. 
When Jennings' little daughter asked for some Christmas lights, he put up over three and a half million. And the display has grown to over five million lights here at the studio. And right now, it's time to see them dance once again. In 2011, sadly, also saw William Jennings Osborne pass away in July after complications of heart surgery at the age of 67. But until then, he never failed to miss a visit each year to see his lights, please so many guests, and spending time each evening walking around and talking to different people visiting. The radio station which was used to present the dance and songs throughout the night was a tribute to Osborne himself, with the radio station's initials standing for William Jennings Osborne. In his lifetime, Osborne strung lights all over the US, including a display at Graceland with a lighted Elvis. Former President Bill Clinton said in 2001 that Jennings had a big heart and gave so much to so many people throughout his extraordinary life. As long as God, Santa Claus, the children, and Mickey are on my side, how can I lose? Siemens took over as sponsor in 2013, and in 2014, reserved viewing of the lights was offered for the first time as part of the Frozen Holiday Premium Package. On September the 11th, 2015, Disney announced that the 2015 holiday season would be the final season for the Osborne family spectacle of Dancing Lights, with the final performance set for January 3rd, 2016. I actually worked at Hollywood Studios during this time and every single night of the lights it was packed with fans coming to see them for the last time. On the 3rd of January it was announced the final season would be extended for a few more nights with it ending on the 6th of January. The final songs the lights danced to was Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas and the Mickey Mouse Club song. Somewhat suspiciously, Silver Dollar City in Branson, Missouri announced they would be adding 1.5 million lights to their already impressive collection in 2017, clearly resembling the Osborne lights. I did reach out to them though, and they did say the lights were inspired from many places they had visited and were created specifically for the park. If that's the case though, where are the lights now that Disney added to the Osborne lights? The original Osborne lights were returned to the Osborne family and some of them were donated to local churches around the Little Rock area, but the many lights added by Disney must still be somewhere. While Hollywood Studios continues to add holiday events each year, nothing can capture the wonder of standing in the middle of the streets of America with the lights dancing around you, and looking around you to see every single face having a huge smile upon it. Jennings Osborne achieved his goal of making millions of people happy, and his family tradition of adding lights to his house continued for 20 years after the Supreme Court tried to end it. Unfortunately though, this time they didn't survive the demolishment of the streets of America. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Expedition Hollywood Studios. What do you think? Are the Silver Dollar City Lights a brand new display inspired by the Osborne Lights or did they find a new home? Let me know in the comments below. Subscribe to join us on the expedition and a special thank you to our Patreons for supporting the channel. We will see you next time.